Hello, all my Yarny friends. I'm Sarah Satch, and welcome, or welcome back, to my crochet channel. Today's video, we're going to be stitching up a fish-shaped mat. Now, this can be used as a small rug. It can be used as a mat to put your cat or dog's food on, and it also makes a really nice placemat for anyone who loves fish, fishing, or cats, or just likes fish mats. <laughs> it measures approximately 18 inches long, and it's about 8 inches here at its widest place. So it's a great size for any use for a mat. Now, this one is quite colorful. I originally designed this fish mat for a friend who does cat rescue. She doesn't crochet, but she wanted a fish mat for the little kitten that she had rescued. And that was back in, I want to say, 2017. And so she contacted me and said, you know what? I need a new mat. And I thought, what a great opportunity to update the pattern and make a fresh, brand new video for our fish-shaped cat mat. Now you can find this crochet pattern on my blog, and I'll put that blog link down in the notes underneath this video. Now although this is not a part of our Scrap Happy Crochet Along this year, it is a great scrap yarn project. This one was made with just some yarns that I had on hand at the time. Bright colors mixed with some solids. But I'm not going to do that for today's video because variegated and dark colors are very difficult to film. And so I just got in my yarn scraps and I pulled out two different colors. This is a mint green and then this is a gold. And I'm going to be holding these two strands together. And so what you're going to need is approximately seven ounces of medium weight number four yarn and you can use two of the same colors, or you can use two different colors. You can use variegated. You can just use whatever colors that you have on hand in your scrap yarn. Or you can purposely get the colors that you want as well. It does, like I said, make a great scrap project. And the fish itself is stitched up holding two strands of yarn together. And I really like using some of my older yarns that are some of the stronger yarns, maybe some of your old Red Heart Super Savers and things like that because I want it to be a good sturdy mat. We're going to be stitching today with our K hook, which is a 6.5 millimeter crochet hook. Now, you'll notice I have a button and an eye out here. If you're using this on the floor around dogs and cats, um, I wouldn't suggest using an eye or a button, but if you want to use this for a placemat or maybe a decoration, you could always add a tie and hang it up, and it would be super cute for a decoration, maybe for a husband who really likes to make his own fishing jigs or something like that. You could always add a button for an eye or one of these eyes or even a safety eye. For the mat itself, we're going to just be stitching with black. So you're going to need just a small amount of black or whatever color you want to use for the eye and then the smile. And that's just stitched on with one strand of black or again, whatever color that you prefer. But if you're going to use it as a decoration or maybe a placemat at the table, you can always add a button or an eye if you want to. Just some other options for you. You'll need a needle for weaving in ends and, of course, for sewing on your smile and your eye. And then, of course, you're going to need a pair of scissors. We're going to make the body of the fish first, and then we'll make the tail, add them together, and then add a trim. So we're going to begin with the body of our fish. So I'm holding my two strands together. I'm going to make my slip knot, and then I'm going to chain 19 chains. Now we're going to be stitching on both sides of this chain. So I suggest you make your initial chain here just a little bit loose. So I'm going to chain 19 chains. 
I've chained my 19 chains just a little bit loose. Now what we're going to do is we're going to stitch two single crochets in the second chain from the hook. That's the first, that's the second. So we'll go in, pull up a loop, yarn over, and go through both loops. One single crochet, now we'll stitch a second one in that second chain. So we stitch two in the second chain from the hook. Now we're going to stitch one single crochet in the next 16 stitches. I stitched a single crochet in the next 16 stitches and that leaves one chain stitch not worked. And in this last chain here, we're going to stitch two single crochets. One and two. So that gives us 20 single crochets. We stitch two in the second chain from the hook. We stitch 16 across and then two in the last chain. So 16 plus 2 plus 2 is 20 single crochets. Now we're going to turn our work and we're going to be stitching down what's called the other side of our chain. It, sometimes it's called the opposite side of our chain. And we're going to go right in our first stitch and stitch two single crochets. One and two. Then we're going to stitch one single crochet in each of the next 16 chains. Got to keep those two loops together. Two single crochets in the first and then one in each of the next 16. I stitched one single crochet in each of those 16 across and that leaves our last stitch and we're going to stitch two single crochets in that last chain. Now we're going to join to the very first single crochet with a slip stitch and we're going to chain two. One, Two. So for row one, we chain 19 chains. We stitched two single crochets in the second chain from the hook. Then we stitched one single crochet in each of the next 16. Then in the last chain, we stitched two single crochets. Then we turned our work and we stitched two single crochets in the first stitch, one single crochet in the next 16, and then two single crochets in that last stitch. We joined to our first single crochet with a slip stitch and chained two. Our chain two counts as one half double crochet. We're going to stitch one half double crochet in the same stitch as our chain two. And that will count as two half double crochets. Now we're going to stitch one half double crochet in the next 18 stitches. The half double crochet, you yarn over, go in and pull up a loop, and you'll have three loops on your hook. Yarn over and go through all three of those loops, just in case you don't remember what a half double crochet is. All right, so I'm going to stitch one half double crochet in the next 18 stitches. I stitched one half double crochet in the next 18 stitches and now we're going to stitch two half double crochets in the next two stitches. One, two, and then in the next stitch we'll stitch two half double crochets. One and two. All right, so we stitch those 18 and then in the next two around this corner we stitch two half double crochets in those two. Now we're going to move down this side 
and stitch one half double crochet in the next 18 stitches. I stitch those 18 half double crochets and that leaves me one stitch left on the end and so we're going to stitch two half double crochets in this last stitch and now we're going to join to the chain two where we started and chain two and so what you're going to have for row two <clears throat> is two half double crochets one of them was our chain two then uh, 18 half double crochets two half double crochets in the two stitches and then 18 half double crochets and then two half double crochets in our last stitch join to the chain two and chain two now for row three we're going to begin with half double crochets and then we're going to do some double crochets through the center We'll do some half double crochets on the end and then some double crochets on the center on this side and then end with half double crochets. And that's just to build it up just a little and bring it back down in order to get that oval shape of our fish. So our chain two counts as one half double crochet. So we'll stitch another half double crochet in the same stitch as our chain two. Now we're going to stitch one half double crochet in the next six stitches one two three four five and six now we're going to stitch eight double crochets one in each of the next eight so yarn over go in and pull up a loop yarn over go through the first two yarn over and go through the second two so there's one two three four five six seven and eight so I stitched eight double crochets and you can see how it's a little bit taller now we're going to stitch six half double crochets one two three four five and six this brings us to the end here of our fish and we're going to stitch two half double crochets in the next two stitches so one two one and two all right, so now we're going to work down this other side and we'll start with those six half double crochets. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So we stitch those six single crochets and now we're going to stitch eight double crochets like we did over here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight and see how it widens it out a little in here and it's more narrow toward the ends and so now we're going to stitch one half double crochet in the next six stitches one two 
three, four, five, and six. And now in this last stitch, we're going to stitch two half double crochets, one and two. And now we're going to join to our chain two with a slip stitch and we're going to chain two. And now we have row three completed and you can see by adding those double crochets in the center, it makes it more of an oval shape. All right, let's do row four. Row four, we're back to doing all half double crochets. Our chain two counts as our first, so we'll stitch a half double crochet in that same stitch as our chain two. And now we're going to stitch one half double crochet in each of the next 22 half double crochet or double crochet stitches. So we're going to stitch across till we reach the other end. One half double crochet in 22 stitches. I stitched one half double crochet in those 22 stitches. So this next stitch, I'm going to stitch two half double crochets. And then in the next stitch, I'm going to stitch two half double crochets. Whoops, got a little loop there. Alrighty, so we stitched two half double crochets in those two stitches. And now we're working across this way and I'm going to stitch one half double crochet in the next 22 half double crochet stitches. One half double crochet in each of the next 22 stitches. I stitched one half double crochet in each of the next 22 stitches. That brings us to our last stitch and we'll stitch two half double crochets, one and two. Join to our chain two with a slip stitch and again, chain two. So we stitched two half double crochets. One was our chain two and then the other half double crochet 22 half double crochets, two half double crochets in those two end stitches, 22 half double crochets, and then we ended with two half double crochets in the last stitch. We join to our chain two and chain two. All right, let's do row or round five. Our chain two counts as our first half double crochet, so we'll stitch a half double crochet in that same stitch. Now we're going to stitch one half double crochet in the next 23 half double crochet stitches. One half double crochet in the next 23 half double crochet stitches. I stitched one half double crochet in the next 23 half double crochet stitches. And now we're going to place two half double crochets in the next three. There's two in that one. Two half double crochets in the next and two half double crochets in the next. So we placed two half double crochets in each of those three half double crochet stitches. Now we're gonna work back down this side and place one half double crochet in the next 23 half double crochet stitches. I placed one half double crochet in the next 23 half double crochet stitches and that leaves us these two at the end. And so we're gonna place two half double crochets 
in these last two stitches. There we go. I'll grab that loop again. All right, now I'm going to join to the chain two with a slip stitch. All right, so we did two half double crochets. One was our chain two. We stitched 22 or 23 half double crochets around. We stitched two half double crochets into three end half double crochets. We stitched 23 half double crochets around and then we ended with two half double crochets in the last two. So that gives us three that we stitched two in at the beginning and at the end. All right, and then we joined. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and cut our yarn. And we're going to tie this off. And this is the fish portion or the body portion of our fish mat. And next we're going to do the tail fin. Won't that be fun? <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and take my needle and I'm going to weave these ends in, tidy it up, and then we'll start our tail of our fish. Okay, let's make our fish's tail fin. We're going to begin with a slip knot and we're going to chain nine chains. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Now what we're going to do is we're going to place a single crochet in the second chain from the hook and then we'll single crochet in the next two chains. Now we're going to half double crochet in the remaining five chains. One, two, three, four, and five. We'll chain one. And you can see that we began with three single crochets and we ended with five half doubles. All right, so we're going to chain one and turn. We'll half double crochet in the first five. One, two, three, four, five. And that leaves those three single crochets. So we're going to single crochet in those three single crochets. One, two, three, chain one, and turn. And so what's happening is we're single crocheting in the single crochets and half double crocheting in the half double crochets to give our tail fin, it'll be narrow on one end and a little bit flared on the other. All right, so let's do row three. Chain one does not count as a stitch, so we'll single crochet in the first three. One, two, three, and then we'll half double crochet in the last five. One, two, three, four, There we go. <laughs> Five. Chain one and turn. And then we'll just repeat it, stitching one half double crochet in the first five. One, two, three, four, and five. And then single crochet in those last three single crochets. One, two, and three chain one and turn. See how that's working? All right, let's do that again. One single crochet in the first three. One, two, three. One half double crochet in the last five. One, two, three, four, and five. Get in there. There we go chain one and turn and again one half double crochet in the five 
one, two, three, four, five, one single crochet in those three single crochets. One, two, and three. And see how it's flared on the end and it's more narrow in the middle? And that's going to be our fish tail. Now we're not going to tie off our yarn. We're going to make a little chain one and then we'll save this yarn so we can sew it on to our fish. So now we want to sew our fish tail onto our fish. All right, and so what we're going to do is we're going to cut off one of these strands of yarn. And I'll just take the blue one off. Or that's actually a mint green. All right, and then we'll go ahead and tie that off. And we'll weave in these and these in just a minute. But what I want us to do is sew our tail on. So we're going to take one of our strands of yarn and thread it onto our needle. Now I want to make sure that it sits so that it doesn't mess up the shape of our tail. All right, so you're going to turn it over, and this is your back side. And we're going to line up that tail. nice and even and we're just going to whip stitch that on and we want to make sure we're going in those back loops and let me show you what I mean by that we're going to stitch that on but if you turn it over it's underneath so that those loops are showing right there they're not needed it just makes it look much neater in the appearance and so what I do is I sort of fold it up and if you want to use a bigger needle and use both of your strands of yarn, you can. I just do it this way. Remember, you do what works best for you. We just want to make sure this is attached securely. I'm going to take a look at it before I go back across. I'm going to lay it out flat. Take a look at it, see how, how you like it looks here. All righty, so now I'm just going to go back over it, making sure it's on there nice and neatly and securely. There we go. Especially those ends. All right, now I'm going to weave this one in, and then I'm going to take a few minutes and weave in my other ones. Now, you can wait till the end and weave everything in if you want to. I just kind of like to do it as I go. Then I don't have to come back and do it again. And one of the things that I do, you probably notice, that when I'm using two strands of yarn, I'll weave the individual ones in with a smaller needle. If you prefer to do it with a bigger needle and weave in both strands, you certainly can. I just like doing it individually. I think it makes it hold better. Just my opinion. And again, you do what works best for you. All right, I'm gonna weave these two ends in and then I'll show you how to put that trim on your fish. My fish tail is attached to my fish. It's all neat and tidy. I've, I've taken all my ends and woven them in. And so we're going to join our yarn down here at the bottom of our fish. So I'm going to turn this over and I'm going to join my yarn down here. And what we're going to do is we're going to evenly single crochet all the way around the edges of our fish. And we want you to do this just a little bit loose so it lays nice and pretty. Okay, so just single crochet evenly around the outside of our fish. And this is going to make it look pretty. It's going to make the tail and the fish uh, become one, basically, <laughs> so that everything lays nice. And I want to show you 
how to go around this edge over here where the tail is. All right, so we're moving in to the inside corner. So I'm putting a single crochet there. And then we just go right to that next single crochet and keep moving around. All right, so I'm just going to keep evenly single crocheting around the fish tail. And so we've got a point here. And so we want to make sure we put two single crochets in those outside points of the tail. And then across the bottom here, we'll just evenly work around the bottom of our fish tail. And you want to try to get in stitches and not those holes because you don't want any big holes on your fish tail. All right, so I'm to this other corner, so I'm going to place two single crochets in that corner, and then we'll just move back down that fish tail. All right, and so we'll just continue working all the way around our fish until we reach back over here, just evenly single crocheting all the way around. I evenly single crocheted all the way around my fish. I'm back where I started. We're going to join to that first single crochet. And we're just going to chain one. Let me pull that down so it doesn't stick out. All right, and so there is my first row of my trim. Now, the next two rows, we're going to be stitching in half double crochets again. And what we're going to do is the first one is a chain two, so we'll chain again. Then in the next stitch, we're going to stitch two half double crochets. One, two. The next stitch, we'll stitch one half double crochet. Then the next stitch, we'll stitch two half double crochets. All right, and so what we're going to do is we're going to do this till we reach this corner of our tail. So we're doing one half double crochet in the next and two half double crochets in the next. And this is going to help our fish lay nice and flat as well, of course, as get a little bit bigger. And so we'll just repeat this till we reach that corner. One half double crochet in the next two, one half double crochet in the next, and repeat till we reach this first inside corner. Make sure here. All right, there's two, and then there's one. And then this one is the last one here, so one, and two. Okay, and you'll notice that from row this row here where we did the single crochet, it's kind of curling up. And by doing that one and two with our half double crochets, it's going to help your fish lay a lot flatter. When you come to the tail of your fish, you're just going to do one half double crochet in each of the stitches until you reach the corner of your fish tail. There we go. And then when you reach that corner, we're going to stitch two half double crochets in that corner. All right, because you don't want your tail to be curled either. All right, and so then we'll just stitch across these single crochet stitches with half double crochet stitches. And then when we get to the corner, we'll do two half double crochets in this corner and then one in each till we reach this inside corner. I completed the tail, half double crochet in each stitch, two in the corner, half double crochet in each stitch, 
two in the corner, and a half double crochet in each stitch. Now around the rest of our fish, we're going to go back to doing what we were doing here. So we'll stitch one half double crochet in the next, and two half double crochets in the next. One and two. One half double crochet in the next, and two half double crochets in the next. And again, this is going to help our fish body lay a lot flatter. We don't want it curling up on us. All right, one and two. Repeat this, working all the way around the fish, and we'll join back to that chain two. I finished stitching around the edge of my fish mat, one and two, one and one half double crochet in the next stitch, two in the next, and repeat all the way around. And you'll notice once you get to this point that it's going to lay a lot flatter. All right, so I'm going to join to my chain two. There we go, with a slip stitch, and I'm going to chain two. And what we're going to do for this last row is just repeat what we just did. We'll do one and two with our half double crochets. We'll stitch around the tail, placing two half double crochets in the two outside corners. And then when we get back here, we'll do one and two all the way around again. I completed that last row of half double crochets, just repeating one and two, what we did around the body, and then again just across here, placing two half double crochets in the two corners of our fish tail. All right, so let's go ahead and finish off. We'll join to that chain two with a slip stitch. We'll tie off. And we'll weave that in that next stitch. There we go. Oh, missed the second loop. There we go. And I like to do that to the back. That way you get a nice finish on the front and it lays nice and pretty. And I'll take a few minutes and weave in these ends. But before I do that, I just want you to see how pretty it lays. Let me turn it around here. Pull those ends in. Wouldn't that be neat to make a bunch of these for a camper or RV in lots of different colors for when you go camping and fishing? <laughs> so I've got a strand of just black yarn, one strand of yarn, and so what I'm going to do, one, two, three, four, and I'm going to put the eye about right here, and so I'm going to go through some of these stitches and I'll go ahead and take my hook and pull that string underneath. But I want to leave enough to tie it off. <clears throat> and then all we're going to do is go through those stitches until the eye is as big as we would like it. And now you want to stitch in the stitches and not the holes. And if you want to make it longer, you certainly can. Just go up and make it longer. And I'll put three or four of these loops on here so that eye stands out nice and pretty. Make it a little bit bigger that way. All right, and then I'll just go, make sure I go in a stitch. And then we'll just loop that around a couple of stitches in the back and then we'll weave that in carefully because you don't want any of the black to show through and mess up the look of your eye. All right, go ahead and cut that one and then I'll weave this other one in and show you how to do the smile. So I've threaded some more yarn on my needle and I kind of want my smile to come up like this. So I'm going to start here, make sure you go up in a stitch And I always like to make a loop. And then I'm just going to work my way up. And 
and it, it's just freehand. You can make your smile any way that you want to, as big as you want to. And then when I get it as long as I want, I'll make that little line across so he's a very happy fish. And then I'll just go back over it so that it's a little bit thicker than just a thin line. We want it to stay put when it goes through the laundry. <clears throat> there we go. And the reason it's important to go through the stitches and not the holes is if you only go through the holes, it will pull on those holes. And also, you might lose it between there. You want it to be able to be seen. This nice, big, happy fish. And you can go over it again if you want a thicker smile. And you can add, you know, a little cheek. You could add eyelashes whatever that you want on your fish to make it as cute as you want it to be. So here's my happy little fish all ready to go to be a cat mat. And one of the things I think would be great is for camping trips to throw these in there because these are made out of your leftover yarns, super easy to wash and use on a camping trip. Wouldn't that be fun? Take your grandkids, go fishing, and make some fish mats to use to eat off of. Super fun. And of course, here's our original one in the bright colors. It's also super fun. And I just love them. They're great, like I said, for the kitties, for the kiddos, and for us adults. <music>